I know maybe some of you residents are in here. A few months ago, I got my first call on the rats that were running loose in some parts of running. I did call the county health department. They informed me at that time that they no longer come out to take care of that. That it's up to the residents to get their own exterminator or go to Home Depot or Lowe's and buy rat poison. The borough does not supply that. So people, it's something you have to do on your own. I am sorry the county stopped it, but I thought you should know. I know I remember taking care of it years ago, but not anymore. I'm sorry. That's all I have to say right now. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor. I'm not going to get too much in finance. Uh, Richard uh, and I've been working on a lot of things. And, uh, we won't 
had a finance committee would make some recommendations. So rather than repeat it, my father wouldn't do as good a job as Richard. We'll ask him to present that. Uh, I wanted to make uh, let people know that the uh, library, uh, Matt, and, uh, had a reorganization at the, at the library. The things are going very, very well at the library. Uh, have a number of programs that we're looking forward to uh, continuing in, in 2012. So, uh, I did want to mention also at the library, uh, starting February 2nd, uh, AARP tax preparers will be in the uh, senior, center, senior center and continue each Thursday from 11 to 2. If you want any more information, the number is 856-208-9983. I'll make sure that the uh, office personnel have that number in case any uh, senior needs help with their income taxes. That's uh, uh, on Thursdays, starting with the second, which which was last week from 11 to 2. Okay. Also, uh, senior citizens did not reorganize. It just so happened that there was a lot, a lot of ice on the ground, so they're going to reorganize. Re excuse me, reorganize a, uh, a week from Saturday. How do we settle that? Any more progress? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you see there's a uh, uh, new ordinance talking about the trash. Uh, the chief of police and a uh, few of us are talking about the way the people are leaving the trash around, and that's one of the source of rats, the trash. If the trash, they need a place to eat, and if they find something to eat, they're going to multiply. So along with the uh, solicitor, Jack, we we're coming up with, trying to come up with an ordinance. So you might hear the first reading tonight. We don't know if it's going to be exactly that. We might change it, you know, according to, you know, some things that are going on now, like your tra the people with the trash cans. If we have some pictures up here of some people on um, Singley Avenue right here. That, uh, it's a disgrace. The trash is all over the place, and they have problems with rats, too. You know, I know they're along the creek and all, but if you looked at, you know, nobody can see it. These pictures here, it's just, it's unbelievable that the trash is the way it is. So we're working on it. Don't think we're not going to work on it and try to you know, get this resolved. It's not going to be resolved right away. So, yeah. Anybody else? Any? Chief, do you have anything else to say on this? No, not at all. Okay, thank you. The other thing is we have a couple of uh, raffle licenses. 12 uh, raffle license 1202, 50-50 on premise. The cash raffle for 3, 10, 12. Holy Child Powers, all work is in order. I can remind you. Okay. So the next one's 1203. Casino Night Raffle, 3, 10, 12. Holy Child Powers, all paperwork is in order. 1204, 50-50 on premise. Cash raffle. I'm sorry, all premise. Uh, cash raffle, 610. Holy Child Powers, all paperwork is in order. 1205, 50-50 on premise. Uh, cash draft 612, I mean 610-12. Holy Child Paris, all paperwork is in order. I'll need a motion for that. So moved. Second. Thank you. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the other thing is, I like uh, Officer Burns back in um, January 12th noticed on East Sham Avenue in one shot that uh, somebody broke into it. By his patrol, he just saw some glass and he observed a lady walking around and uh, Howard Brooks and him uh, approached it and had a brief struggle with a female companion, but they made a nice arrest over there, you know. It was, uh, the cops are starting to, you know, really uh, do a better job, I think, with some of the stuff that we had, some of the problems we had in the future. So I'd like to thank the uh, chief and uh, the captain. And the overtime was really down. It was only 16 hours and uh, some of us were, uh, the road work and all that, so we get reimbursed on that. Uh, other than that, that's it. Thank you. Oh, Frank, can you tell? Go ahead. Uh, tonight, Frank Williams will not be here. He was involved in a car accident uh, last night, and uh, he's going to the doctors again today, so that's why Frank is not here tonight. <coughs> Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Um, 
my recreation report. Uh, like I said, I met with the members of the police department. Uh, we visited the Harry Williams building. Uh, most of you might be aware that the police have to open and close the Harry Williams building for whatever the, there's use there. So we're trying to work out a system where we had automatic opening and closing of the doors. This would free the police up from to do their jobs as opposed to just opening and closing the doors and they go in and, and turn the lights on. So um, the police officers are dispatched to open and close the doors. Many times this is difficult. To be there at the exact time someone needs the facility. Players, coaches, etc. are waiting. So there's a limited time for these activities. So the idea is if we can automate the, uh, the doors, we wouldn't have to send an officer out there. So we're looking into that and we're looking for the support of a council to make that change. I met with a locksmith along with uh, Councilman White uh, to install these electronic devices. We also looked at the electricity so that we can maybe turn the lights on and off easily instead of having to go to the breaker and, and turn it on. So hopefully Mr. White will be helping me to, to look at that. The, uh, let's see. the police would still do their nightly rounds at the, at the property, they just would not have to open and close it. Same with the heating and air conditioning, we maybe can automate that. So the goals would be to eliminate the police opening and closing the doors, easy access for the people using the facility, uh, more security. Uh, Councilman Kizileski on several occasions has called me that the doors have been left open, so we're going to try to work something out where uh, these doors would close somehow, or at least they would have to push some type of security system so that we would know they were closed. And then if we automate the heating and air conditioning and the lights, it would save on our utility costs. Um, public Works Department came up and clean the baseball fields, uh, pick up trash and debris along there uh, around the R Y and the RYA cans were going to be stored, so maybe we won't get as much trash down there. The police also uh, used the community service kits to uh, clean up the trash around the girls' softball field in the scout building. The, the kids did a nice job. They picked up branches and uh, trash and leaves. Public Works also cleaned the path around the Beaver Branch Park, so that's accessible, close to a mile, and they cleaned all the way around. And the last thing I'd like to report is I met with the leaders of our youth organization about what their goals are and, and to just establish a dialogue with them. Um, obviously this year I'm, I'm the Director of Recreation. There's a few things that, that we typically do, uh, our summer rec program, but I'd like to expand it with it and, and open up more of a dialogue with the two at least the RYAA and the RY and the uh, girls softball league. And so some of the things that we're looking to do first with them that they brought to my attention were some safety issues. There's a need for, for bleachers that uh, meet the requirements, uh, fencing problems, there's some tree problems, and then just get together and talk about some long-term plans with them. Okay, so right now one of the things we did talk about when, Mr. Kozlewski just re uh, reported to me that Public Works is going in in the mornings to make sure that it is cleaned up. One of the problems we were having is people were using the property and it, no, the, the police weren't, you know, they were opening the door and turning the lights off. They weren't necessarily looking at all the, the bathroom stalls. They weren't looking at the trash cans and I wouldn't expect them to do that. But the Public Works Department is now doing it every morning. So at least if, if there is a problem, it would be handled quicker. We have a lot of use. It's six days a week, seven days a week, uh, buildings being used, so uh, Public Works is stepping up with that. It's, it's, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, this year, it's been meant to have been uh, working moving ahead on our road project for this year, getting that range, replacement of sidewalks around the <coughs> and closing out the projects. Uh, and PCZ finally installing the lights in the block of the that's a move forward. A lot of phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, uh, report progress. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mayor. On January 18th, I attended a two-hour workshop at the uh, AWA and Voorhees learning about trap neutering and returning of feral cats. I don't know of any feral cat communities in our town, but if anyone is interested, the AWA has a workshop every third Wednesday of the month that anyone can attend, or you can see me after the meeting for more information. 
On January 20th, I had a two-hour meeting with the superintendent of schools, Dr. Nancy Ward. We discussed many topics. One was shared services. She would like um, if we would take into consideration possibly sharing some services like office supplies, ice melt, uh, maybe equipment, technology. And communication was, was the key thing for her. She wanted better communication with the borough and the planning board. It is required of the school that they have a long-range facility plan. And if something is on our agenda that might involve bringing more children into our community, for example, building more homes, Dr. Ward needs to know that. My suggestion was, this, was that Dr. Ward send a representative to the meetings, and Dr. Ward agreed. I also gave Dr. Ward written contact information, and a request was made to Joyce Pinto, our borough clerk, that you now can provide Dr. Ward with the planning board agenda. Joyce is noted. Joyce had notified June from the planning board and she will be communicating with Dr. Ward regarding any new building developments. January 25th, I attended a school board meeting at Mary Bolt's and at that meeting they approved the resolution that eliminates the annual budget vote. Dr. Ward did say that the budget pre presentation will still be held in March for all to view and for everyone to attend. All school budgets <coughs> need to be approved by the county and the school still has to stay within the 2% cap. I have a list of frequently asked questions regarding the new school's election law. If anyone would like a copy, you can see me after the meeting. On uh, January 28th, I attended the New Jersey League of Municipalities. It was an eight-hour seminar for newly elected officials, re-elected officials, and experienced. It was very fast-paced and designed to quickly bring officials up to date on important municipal issues. Newly elected officials, like myself, got a thorough overview <coughs> of their major areas of responsibility, key contacts at the state level, and important source of information and assistance. It was very educational, and then there were many guest speakers. February 1st, I requested a workshop. I met with the HEW committee, Mr. Capatis and Mr. White, and we discussed all of the above including the room situation. February 2nd, I attended a two-hour seminar at the 2012 Municipal Budget Update at Belvin and Company and where he's uh, our borough auditors. They keep us informed and update with recent developments that affect the governmental accounts, accounting, and finances. Please remember that the 2012 pet licenses are now available in the clerk's office. Spades for neutered dogs are $22.20. Unspayed or non-neutered dogs are $25.20. Cat licenses are $21. Rabies vaccinations must be valid until October 30th, 2012. Pet licenses are late after March 31st and a $20 late fee will be added. All of this information can be found on our Runnymede website, www.runnymedenj.org. These fees help defray the cost of the contract that we have with Camden County Animal Shelter. This is the shelter where the controlled officer brings the animals, and if they are sick or injured, it is given veterinarian attention, and if necessary, left in a hospital for us to pay. Also, this contract allots us 96 animals per calendar year, and anything over that, we get charged extra, and there are a lot of extra overcharges. Uh, it also pays for animal control officer. It pays for the veterinarian and two assistants that help give out the rabies vaccine during our free clinic. Uh, a dollar for each dog license that is, is forwarded to the DHSS, which is the Department of Health and Senior Services. That dollar is placed in a rabies health trust fund to help support the state rabies and animal control programs. $3 is for unneutered dogs that is forwarded to the DHSS Animal Population Control Program and $0.20 cents for each licensed dog that, which is forwarded to defray the cost of, op of operations for the People for Animals, which is a low-cost spade and neutered clinic in Hillside, New Jersey. These are fees that were enacted into law in 1983, and you can find all this information on the State of New Jersey's official website. The borough, in conjunction with the Camden County Department of Health, will be holding a free rabies clinic for dogs and cats on Saturday, March 10th, between 10 and 12 noon at the Harry Williams Building. The, this rabies vaccine is good for three years. This concludes my report. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.
to start off with some good news. Uh, our long awaited for window is open at the back by the police department for a collection of taxes. Uh, that's open the first 10 days of the tax cycle and uh, you have to pay by check. So as you, as you make your way out, you might want to check out the new window. Um, I also want to point out to the residents that there is a, we posted something on our website, there's a scam going on where someone is sending a letter saying that you won a lottery with a copy of a check and it's addressed to you. So I guess they're using actual addresses. So you, you know, it gives it some appearance of uh, validity. Um, then they're telling you to send them a money order and then you can deposit the check. So uh, I would advise anyone getting that to, to throw it away. We have forwarded a copy to the Detective Bureau, but you know, there's really, these things are so widespread, there's not much we can do other than to advise people not to, to take part in it. Um, from a finance point of view, the finance system is now rolled over and all the 2012 budgets, uh, temporary budget line items are available. Uh, the capital bond is also available. Uh, we held a note sale for the capital plan, and actually it's closing tomorrow. Uh, as, a, as required by statute, I'd just like to point out that the, the low bidder was TD Bank NA. Uh, the net interest rate is 1.15%, and the amount that we are uh, financing is $1,729,000. Uh, that basically represents a rollover of last year's capital plan of $729,000 and a million dollars for the capital plan for 2012, uh, which was approved in November of 2011. Uh, our plan over the next several years is to utilize short-term financing to save costs on uh, underwriting and uh, things of that nature, and it will tie in with our reduction in debt service into the future. Um, on the agenda tonight, we have an authorization for an online auction for surplus vehicles. Uh, we asked all of our departments to identify vehicles that were uh, either had no salvage value or they were costing us too much to repair and we have our first round on the agenda tonight. Uh, we'll be utilizing uh, Gov Deals, which is one of the authorized uh, state online brokers and basically that opens it up to a wider market um, and we're hoping to, to do well on that. Uh, also on the agenda tonight we have an appropriation reserve transfer for the 2011 year uh, to make sure we have funds to, to pay bills that carried over uh, for December. Uh, there's also an emergency temporary appropriation uh, for a couple items that are just uh, added to the budget. We have the Triton Interlocal, we have DMV Interlocal, uh, interest on notes, which is uh, for the note rollover tomorrow, and the recycling tax line item for garbage and trash. Uh, so they're basically standard items. Uh, with regards to the capital ordinance, uh, just a, a quick update. Uh, and I think uh, Councilman White has pointed out that Bach has already started the design and testing and things that go along with the road program for, for this year. Uh, so we'll be moving uh, when the weather breaks. We have the jail cell, jail cell floor rehab project is also moving forward. Um, the fire department is uh, first with uh, their bond uh, purchase for a command vehicle, which will be replacing one of their uh, vehicles that again has high maintenance that will be uh, selling. Uh, the police department is still in the finalization of their vehicle plan uh, and the goal there is to place two of the SUVs that with the capital bond that are they're costing us a lot for maintenance and we're hoping to do a lease purchase for three vehicles which will basically we won't buy cars for the next two years so we'll be advancing uh, two years worth of cars and hopefully the maintenance line item will significantly uh, be reduced there. Uh, the only other item that we're working on that didn't come forward to you tonight is the chipper for the Public Works Department. Um, it was thought that the vendor had a state contract, but it turned out that that state contract was just for maintenance and repair. So we're going to quickly get together with Jack and put together a bid package to, uh, to get that out on the streets uh, so we can move forward. And the goal there is to be able to uh, chip up to 18-inch logs, which will significantly reduce our, our dumping fees for the, the trees. Um, the only other item I have on the agenda to discuss is the, the budget process. Uh, the Finance Committee uh, agreed that we will meet again and we will finalize the, the priorities for the 2012 budget and we will hand out the, the packages to the directors in the, uh, probably in the next couple weeks. So we'll be moving forward on that. That's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. So this 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, as Councilman Pistolesi had, uh, <laughs> Councilman Kev had discussed, um, we are we have Ordinance 12-01 on the agenda this evening, which is a revision to uh, Section 316 of our ordinances entitled Garbage and Rubbish Collection. It was um, a request that we include a provision that would require garbage to not be visible from any of the streets, essentially, which would mean that they would have to be stored um, in the backyards and not the front yard, so they can't be visible from the streets. There's also a request that we include in the ordinance something stronger to say that um, uh, garbage can't be stored for an extended period of time. Section 316-2 does discuss stores, but it doesn't put a time limit as to how long um, garbage can be stored with on property. So those would be the two revisions. Okay. Sure. What happens if you live on a corner? If you live on a corner, there, there is a backyard, there's a side yard and a front yard. But you still can see it from all angles. That would create a problem. Um, Are we saying if it's behind a fence? Is that if it's be behind a fence, it's obviously if you don't, that's not visible. We're just trying to keep it out of the view because a lot of people are leaving their trash cans out front and on the sides with all the trash. And when you drive by, you know, it's like single avenue. That's a prime example. I understand what you're saying, but it I mean, still could be a technicality. But, you know, if you're on a corner street. You can, you can see the trash from all areas. I can envision many different scenarios <coughs> where you could see the trash, see garbage from the street. Um, but to the extent it's possible, um, we can place language in there that says they have to be in your corner. <laughs> well, no, you, you, just have you want to say the backyard? I mean, the, the backyard would be visible. I mean, if we could use the run it limited to say that that all garbage would be stored in the rear yards of the property as opposed to the side yards or the front yard, that, that would limit it. Okay, it's fantastic. It's a close yes, but somebody's backyard uh, against the house, and you can't see the side of it. I'm just pleased to have that. What are you going to put it on? There's always exceptions to everything. What are we going to do with first reading tonight, and we'll, we'll fix the language? Mm -hmm. Correct. <coughs> but it has to be done. I submitted my report in writing. There's a few things I'd like to go over. Uh, as Councilman White alluded to, we started the design on the 2012 Handicap Ramp Program and also the road program, which involves four roads. All the roads have been surveyed now, and we're starting to design. The one thing I'd like to talk about is on East 2nd Avenue, the Camden County Community Development Block Grant uh, application is due in March. So I'm recommending that we use that money for the East Second Avenue project. It's within the um, target area for CDPG, and we just have to have a resolution on the March meetings agenda to do that. So that's something that we're recommending. Um, the 2011 road program is construction complete. We have a recommendation for payment number two on January 20th, and we're still holding $16,000 of retainage to address any punch list items and possible penalties. The contractor was three days late on the project, so we can impose a $1,500 fine on that. So we're still holding enough money to address that. Um, the East Jam Road sidewalk for curb project is complete, and we have a recommendation to pay but concrete on tonight's agenda. The improvements to the various borough buildings the municipal building roof and the Harry Williams building roof are both complete. Uh, we're just holding retainage for both of those projects, uh, facing uh, until some administrative items like the bonds are taken care of. The jail cell floor, Rich Wright alluded to that uh, we're ready to go ahead with that contract. We sent the contracts to Granieri on January 26th. Once we get them back, we'll get them executed by the mayor and then we will schedule a pre-construction meeting and we'll um, invite the police department 
and Director of Public Works and anybody else that might want to attend the meeting. Uh, but I'll take care of that through email, of course. The side egress door, now that we have the, the new um, funding in place, we can go ahead with that design. So I'm going to have our applicants come out, take a look. That's the door that's right over here. It's uh, when it rains, the water comes in underneath the door. So we'll have our architects, architects take a look at that. And we'll get three quotes for that. Tax map updates and the zoning map are complete. Um, Steve Bach will be meeting with the planning board probably in March to give him the plan and some other things to learn some ordinances that he's got to uh, meet with. But I'm, I think he's waiting until the solicitor has been chosen before he makes his appearance. So we're still waiting for the planning board to get that issue resolved. Um, The White Horse or Black Horse Pipe Phase 2, PSNG is out there. We also have a letter we sent to Bud Concrete regarding some punch list items. I believe they have until tomorrow to get back to me regarding their plan of attack. If they don't get back to me, I'll get the solicitor and see if we want to send information to the bonding agent or something for that effect to get them back out there. <coughs> Did, uh, uh, today, I think I saw the PCNG. Are they replacing some of those? Uh, they're replacing them four. Themselves? They're going to replace four of the bases that were damaged. Mm -hmm. Snow plows. Right, right. right. <coughs> we had sent we had sent a letter to them requesting that, and they are blocking it with that. Nice. Um, and the Beaver Branch projects. Uh, we finally got the DEP permits, mm -hmm. so we're moving ahead to finalize those plans and get that out to the bid. One thing John Gunn wants us to look into is for his pump station down there, he's looking for uh, three phase power. <coughs> right now it's only two phase, so we have to get a price from PSENG and what it would cost to run a third phase out there. Um, somehow he likes that for his pumps. I'm not sure of all the details of that, but I'd like to get a cost from it for it, and then we can bring that to the committees um, and try to make a decision on what's the benefits of a three-phase pump versus a two-phase pump, but that's something that John John is recommending. Is so PC and J saying they would, they would charge us to yes. do three phase? Don't they do a use uh, analysis and if our use is high enough they put the three phase in for free or we don't we, we have to submit paperwork for them to look at and get a cost for. Um, <coughs> but it's like anything else if you want something to be a and you have to pay for it. Um, so we're, we're going, we want to get those costs and find out uh, what it would cost to, to do that and then the committee can make a decision or a recommendation. And the last thing I have is the public works garage where we're doing the uh, underground storage tank remediation and study. We got another letter from DEP requiring that we hire a licensed site remediation professional, uh, LSRC. Um, we have that going on in three of the towns we represent, so we're actually interviewing some LSRP representatives to see who could recommend that the, uh, the borough uh, contract with. But they, it would be a third party because we don't have any money from our office that can do that work. Excuse me, can that be a long process? It's going to, basically the oversight used to be handled by NJDEP and we would pay a fee. I'm not sure what our yearly cost was, close to $3,000, something like that. And it's just, DEP's oversight of our remediation efforts. Um, the state's having cutbacks, so instead of them overseeing it, you hire a licensed professional to oversee the remediation, and they, there's a license in the process you have to go through. Um, so it's basically a third party who's going to oversee what we do to remediate that site, but we just don't want to hire someone that wants to start spending the borough's money unnecessarily. So we're trying to find a good representative to oversee this. Uh, we have to lay the hire this person? Yes. And then they might, I don't know if you remember, but right now we're just going testing out there. To stand. We knew that at some point we have to go with some type of remediation, probably like a charcoal filter because the, the contaminants are in the groundwater. So the licensed person will probably get us on board with what we have to do. Right now, we're waiting for the DEP to tell us what to do. So that's what we say on that. With that progress, Mayor.
old business than a big <coughs> I Um, resolution 12-23, resolution confirming 2012 appointments to emergency management, Charles Ramon Sr. from uh, 1112 through 1231-14. If you remember, we did this at the reorg, but the uh, gentleman that uh, oversees us in the county told me it needs to be a three-year appointment. So uh, we have to redo it and do it for three years. And also the beautification committee, Edwin White, Patricia Gunn, Patricia Smith, Kathleen Ober, Susan Meir. Meyer, uh, Mary Moray, Teresa Laviano, William Obert, and Joseph Conley. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Roll call. Roll call. Mr. Capaz? Yes. Mr. Spasio? Yes. Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Mr. White? I move that this um, yeah. Mr. Bates? Yes. That's uh, four eyes, one abstention, and one That's abstention. That's okay. Uh, request authorization for the proper official to sign the New Jersey State Firemen's Association membership application for uh, Daniel Guccio. They're those standard things we send up for all the uh, fire people. And I need your approval to sign. Second. All those in favor? Aye. I request authorization for the borough clerk to advertise for the purchase of a new chipper. I'll make a motion. Sorry. In favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it. Resolution 12-24 is a resolution, resolution authorizing the award of a contract to tech please for maintenance of the borough website for 2012. Rich and I do most of the uh, weekly so, updates, and he just, uh, we have problems with the site or anything else needs to be updated, he takes care of uh, all that. Anything that we keep, Rich or I can't handle. So there's no additional charges? Yeah, there is additional charges. Well, he has something on here, something that's- $65. Yeah, but that has to be approved by both parties, so that would be outside of the scope. That would be something really- uh, Basically, uh, if we wanted to put a new page on there for public safety or whatever the topic may be, uh, we can do it, but we don't do it very nicely sometimes. So we reach out to Jeff, and he makes yeah. it look nice. Um, if we were to redesign our whole web page, then that's where we would end up paying okay. sixty-five dollars. Um, but hour. this is half the cost of what we paid last year because Rich and I now do the uh, the daily, not daily, but you know weekly. Whenever we need to update something, Rich and I go in there. So we don't we don't do to Jeff anymore. Not for the Jeff, for Jeff the came daily in and trained things. us. So basically, to, to do the basics, uh, to throw something on, on the web page or to post a, an important notice, a storm or something like that, you know, we we're capable of going and doing that stuff. So. <coughs> we calendar events, things that are happening in our town on our calendar. We have a calendar there for calendar events. We use, events, the, front, we use so. the front page for it. Post. So you don't use the calendar events? I don't we use it. If something was presented to us to, to put on that, we would we could do that. That's not a problem. But right now we've been using the we've been using the front page as opposed to when there's we put the new tax window on there we put the mail scam on there I even put, I even moved the section of the uh, under the uh, licensing from the pet licensing on there just to, <coughs> things that were current we put on the front page because I don't know if people scroll through for all that information but you know I just would like I'm, I'm sorry just like to have seen more organized. <coughs> Would that be a problem? Uh, to to put up a calendar? No, no, I don't think that'd be an issue. We could just uh, maintain. But it's going to take up your time. Correct. As, well, as long as it's happening, uh, you know, if we had to go back and, and post 97 items, it would take a while. If somebody, you know, 
says, can you please post this? And we have a process that it gets on there. Um, it's just a, a couple minutes to post that. Item, so. so you're talking about future events, for right. summer recreation, we could post that now for the summer. You wouldn't want that on the front page? Maybe both. I, yeah, I, I think how we have the calendar events there. It would be nice to be posting something on there. Um, I just I just would have liked to see more things itemized what we're getting for two thousand um, dollars. And I would like to see Rich uh, not have to do so much on the website and possibly be getting an. Well, Rich is saying those two thousand dollars. Really? <laughs> and Teresa does most of it. She posts the minutes. Well, I think that two, several years ago when we first started with this contract, we were paying more. And I don't. I think we were having problems getting the updates done. And you are correct. It was, it was difficult getting Jeff to update as quickly as we needed. Right. I think it was a good move that, that Joyce and, and Rich went and, and got the training. I don't disagree. That we're not using every page on the website. And, and I think for oh, I agree with you. So we're not using every Yeah, so maybe we can start to expand on that. But we're also the percentage of the page. I agree. I agree. I think that's great. Where's the motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Mr. Pons. Yes. Mr. Pizzolowski. Yes. Mr. White. Yes. Mr. Mrs. Passio. I'm going to say now. Mr. Bages. <coughs> Uh, four eyes, one no, and one absent. I'm the resolution be adopted. Resolution 12-25 is a resolution authorizing, <coughs> authorizing the extension of the contract for purchasing office supplies with the county co-op. They, they opted on the uh, one of the one-year options. This is the one that saves us up to 70% sometimes of the uh, price of uh, our uh, Second. No call. Mr. Papanis? Yes. Mr. Tassel? Yes. Mr. Fizzlewski? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Beatrice? Yes. It's five eyes, one eyes. Oh. I'm going to the resolution date that. Resolution 12-26 is a resolution recognizing the addition of Haddon Heights Fire Department to the Beaverbrook Regional Fire Alliance. This is a, an alliance we put in place quite a few years back, and now Haddon Heights is joining it. Thank you. Oh, Paul. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Okay. This one. That should be Mr. White? Yes. Mr. 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 I took an old boat down. Uh, Mrs. Passio? Yes. And Mr. Beatrice? Yes. That's um, five eyes and one absent. Uh, do you want to do the closed session now, or do you want to save it till the... Uh, I'll have the table for now. Table for now, okay. Uh, resolution 12-28 is a resolution authorizing the 2012 emergen emergency temporary appropriations. Second. I'm sorry, who made, who made the uh, motion? Okay. I did make the second, then. Mr. Kapaz? Yes. Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. And Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Five eyes and one eye. Resolution uh, Resolution 12-29 uh, is a uh, resolution authorizing the Treasurer to make transfers between appropriation reserves in the 2011 budget. Second. Oh, oh. Mr. Hobbs. <coughs> Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Mr. Passio? Yes. Mr. White? Mr. Yes. White? I'm sorry. Yes. And Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Five eyes, one absent. I move the resolution be adopted. Uh, the resolution 12 uh, 30 is a resolution authorizing the disposal of our property, which has no value. This is the 1987 bus that's being donated to the Jews Landing Fire Department. Move for your Second. Roll call. Mr. Pazz? Yes. Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. And Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Five resolution 12-31 is a resolution to authorizing the sale of surplus personal property no longer needed for public use on an online auction website. Second. 
Mr. Cavadas? Yes. Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. Mr. Fascio? Yes. And Mr. Beatrice? Yes. And my body is one ask. Resolution 12-32 is a res resolution authorizing the adjustment of the sewer account. Move to the adoption. Second. Mr. Papadis? Yes. And Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. Mr. White? Yes. And Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Bye bye, it's one absent. I move the resolution be adopted. Resolution 12-33 is a resolution awarding the contract to Day Chevrolet for 2012 Tahoe with fire department under a state contract. Make a motion. Mr. Clavis? Yes. And Mr. Kozlowski? Yes. And Mr. White? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. And Mr. Beatrice? Yes. Resolution 12-34 is a resolution awarding a contract to General Sales Administration trading as major police supply for three-camera mobile slate ALPR for the police department under a state contract. Before we vote on it, Mayor, hey, Chief, you'd like to come up and explain that? The camera system, the mobile camera system, the football. A wireless system that we're having a lot of problem areas. Green Acres, for instance, with all the trash that's just stumped down there. We have people constantly dumping. Some of our park areas, we have graffiti problems. Cameras are wireless. All you have to do is uh, just put them on a lamp on a pole. We'll be able, hopefully, to access them with our computer system and the police department monitor it. Well, this is for the license plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that, one's a, that was next meeting. <laughs> wrong, wrong system. Yeah, I'm sorry. Many systems are going to get. Uh, license plate recognition is a it's a computer that mounts inside one of our police cars. Uh, it has cameras mounted inside. It'll read approximately 3,000 license plates every minute, I believe. So what it is, it's a, it's a great tool. They claim that they will pay for themselves within six months. If you have a uh, parking lot, cars or cars, say for instance that we had a mall, or even the supermarkets, uh, Yakmi lot, as the car drives up and down the lanes, it's constantly grabbing tag numbers, immediately printing them onto the computer. If somebody's got a stolen car, if somebody has an unexpired uh, or expired registration, we go back to the police department, we'll issue tickets. If the car is stolen, we'll just keep right on driving, bring somebody in an unmarked car, Hopefully, make an arrest as a result of it. It's a great car. Which three cars you have there? Just one car. Oh, it's called three cameras. Yeah, it's got three, three, three cameras. cameras. So three cameras for one car. Yeah. But they, 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 they pay work. for themselves. Yes. Yes. I, I know. Stafford has to watch it, and I don't know where Bradford. They pulled me over and told me my registration is no good. So <laughs> how did you know? They said, We know. <laughs> so, we're going to have like a traffic. Uh, It'll be signed to somebody who can address the ticket writer in the department. There's one, one vehicle, can't move from vehicle to vehicle. No. Thank you. 
Motion to adopt on first reading and advertise according to the law of the public hearing to be held on the sixth day of March 2012 and meeting beginning at 5.30 p.m. Before we vote on, I'd like to have every uh, council person get one and review it and make any changes necessary if they feel something should be changed. Judge Fitt, Old West Thompson Avenue, uh, Gloucester City. To go back to the minutes, um, I'll direct my questions through the chair. Um, I'm going to pass you, you just voted in the 2012 or 2011? You also voted in 2011. Mm -hmm. Did you just vote for the 2012 minutes or did you also vote for 2011 because you weren't on council at the time? 2012. 2012. Um, next issue I would like to ask. And I believe I sent a letter, and four members of the governing body are aware of the letter I sent as well as the solicitor. Regarding the mayor of the borough of Runnymede appointing the council manic member on two separate occasions, in the absence of the council manic member. Um, and uh, I sent my letter, and I'm curious um, pretty much the setup of your planning and zoning with the joint land use board. That's like chapter 101 to land use law. How's the land use board set up? Mr. Schmidt, let me stop you for one second. This is a case, as you are well aware, is currently involved in litigation, and we're not going to discuss it at this point. Um, now, comment, ask another question. Um, at the time, which this originally occurred, as you all know, in December of 2011, uh, the solicitor for the Planning and Zoning Board is now your prosecutor. Um, I had uh, requested to look at a copy of the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Board meetings throughout uh, calendar year 2011. Uh, what I found was on three occasions, um, there were 10 members voting at a Planning and Zoning Board meeting. Um, as the mayor and Mr. Beatrice are well aware, um, 10 members should never go to a meeting, only nine. And in the absence of a member of any class, that is when you're designated an alternate one of the board or alternate two votes. The alternates of two boards um, only vote in the case of a absence of a member of any class. Um, that happened three occasions. My first question, since there is no planning and zoning board attorney to discuss this with, um, how do we correct the situation where Mr. Rhodes had voted on three occasions? Um, and secondly, um, I guess I'd like to ask anybody who wishes to comment why in the world would you appoint a solicitor to be your prosecutor in charge of a great number of laws, from local laws to state laws under Title 39, if you couldn't even get Chapter 101 of Land Use Law correctly? Mr. Schmidt, I can tell you that, that both of those questions are actually more appropriate for the planning board. 
However, to answer your first question, it's my understanding that the planning board is going to be <coughs> making a recommendation for a solicitor at their next meeting. So that issue should be, and I'm sure will be, rectified by the planning board under the new solicitor. Okay. <coughs> Second question. I'm sure everyone understands your concern and it is doing it. Um, finally, I'd like to address the uh, issue of parking at schools. It's something which I uh, started to uh, take a look at in recent weeks following the one way over at uh, Volts and um, also attending school board meetings and hearing about the issue. Um, I was out at, um, on Volts on 126. There was 11, oh, I'll just, I was out downing in both 126 and 127 and downing on 131 in January of this year. In total, uh, there were 65 cars parked on yellow, which is you no know, parking. Oftentimes for 20, 30 minutes, oftentimes people getting out of their cars, at times parking in front of fire hydrants. Um, I learned um, that um, the school board for a number of years has been asking for communication with this borough to address the problem. And it's a safety problem. It's that when you got cars parking on the yellow close to the school or close to a crosswalk and they back up, kids start out all the time. God forbid some you know car hits a kid. You hear about it happening here or there every number of years. And I think people have gotten too complacent. Granted it's nice to park right next to the school. I've also been down there at Downing, and I think there's way too much yellow, and I'm not sure why it's all yellow. I was told that it used to be for the school buses, which there are no longer school buses. Um, and I was hoping to give a handout to all of you, and I will email you by this time next week at your uh, borough email addresses. Um, unfortunately, I've had other things come up, and I haven't been able to really put it all together in a Word document to make it look nice. But uh, I'm wondering if this is an issue that the council will say, you know what, we will look into it, we will have our education subcommittee meet with the school board, look at the ordinances, maybe include the police chief or police officers, and come up with something uh, that works uh, for the town and for the safety of the kids. Would that be something the borough would do? John, we'll be looking into it. I discussed it with the chief a couple times already. Uh, I didn't hear of no letter sent or communication from the school. Uh, when I'll talk about in the past. In the past. How, how, how long ago, John? I don't have a specific date. Okay, well, I mean, I, I've been talking to Nancy Ward last year about certain things, and she never brought it up to me. As a matter of fact, it was the chief, Paul, and uh, Detective Haynes was in the room, and they never brought that up to me. That was, you know, before the one way street. Off what I what I had been told uh, in terms of the parking situation. I mean, it's never been brought up to me at all. Chief, have you, you know about this request for no parking? No, nothing. I mean, Chief's been here pretty long. So, I mean, I don't know where it is. That's what I heard from you. Okay. Um, um, but if it's something the borough could look into, if you go out there and see it, um, it, it, it's an issue. It is an issue. And I it's think there's a way to better streamline it. You know, I know like the new schools, you know, have the, the wraparound in front. Maybe putting out cones in the street. Parents can like pick up and drop off and do a drive by or something like that. The streets are tight, there's a lot of people there. Um, but something yeah, needs to be looked at. I can tell you, Mr. Schmidt, Schmidt this, this, this has been an ongoing problem um, with our schools that the council has made in the past couple of years um, several attempts to make some revisions to the ordinances, and it's a fluid process which has not ended, so it's something that they'll continue. When you know the last time the school board itself there was maybe like a joint meeting with members from each body on this issue, you know when the last no, time that occurred? No. We talked we talk before last year about other things. Or two years ago, I guess once they had uh, made some recommendations about one of those streets. Yeah, well, that was last year. Maybe that's something that maybe some members of council don't know what's for the police committee or the education subcommittee. Uh, being a school board meeting today. Thank you.
any uh, Patricia back? I live at 64 South Oakland Avenue, Mermaid. And I'm just here to address the Toyota project that's going on um, along between uh, on the Twidge Road and Asian Road, I believe. I forward you a letter and everybody should have pictures of that. I just want to know, is this going to be maintained after the project's done? Is there going to be an inspector go out and often inspect the drains, make sure they're cleaned, or say if they have to build up where it is sloped down? Because I was, apparently the contractor said this building's going to have to be built up, or is that going to have to be watched? So I was just wondering if, if anybody's going to take care of this. And as far as cleaning up, um, they were there on Friday cleaning up our mudslide, as I called it, between the houses. Uh, however, they still didn't finish, and I don't know whether to contact them or, or should I contact more, because there is a cement slab that I have on my back of my property where an old shed I tore down and you can't see the cement slab so it goes that there's all mud all over it yet and i was wondering if there's any thing as far as the hill now i know they don't own that property i imagine i think the borough owns that or it's like an easement um there's still all mud around there and i was told there's going to be grass well they did put a tarp twice but that already disintegrated with the rain and just put the hills just straight up at, at my level, you know, you know, look from my my level of the property. And we, I was wondering if there's gonna be any kind of shrubbery put in there, because that's what was there originally for years. And that, that holds all that dirt or whatever. Or is there gonna be a retaining wall built? Someone said there might be a bike path in there. I don't know how they're going to do a bike path. They'll be doing it on their side. Uh, I, I don't know. So I just wanted to know if there's any answers. Um, do you have, if you had a chance to look this over or whatever? If I can answer that. Um, mm -hmm. I can answer some of your questions. Mm -hmm. With regard to um, who would be in charge of policing that area, if there's going to be additional build ups and problems along those lines. That actually goes into the construction department to be a um, code enforcement issue at that point. Okay. And our code enforcement officer is, uh, knows that there's going to be issues there, so he would be periodically patrolling the area to make sure mm -hmm. that um, if there's any violations that occur under the ordinance, so he would have the ability to say it when it's happening and mediate those issues. Okay, thank you. Question, yeah, the, the property in the back is actually an easement. Right. Um, that at one point or sometime in the future there may be a possibility that they're going to put a taxi bike trail back there. Um, there hasn't been any any plans currently to do that, but if that does happen, then there will be some construction back there to do that. Um, until that happens, mm -hmm. that property, that area that is if I have any questions going forward instead of coming you know I don't want to be bothering the mayor council can I address sure, call you sure. Mark? You can call me. I can call Mark yes. which I yeah. have been in contact with and we talked about this it's an active construction site and we don't sign off until until it's complete and the site is in terms with the planning board to plans and the site's plan. So we don't sign off on it, they have to have the bonds in place. So if there's any issues during construction, mm -hmm. just let me know. Okay. And with the dirt on your slab, I'll clean it up. Great. I did speak to one of the workers before I left for work that Friday morning, and I did tell him there was a cement slab, and he had said, oh, well, it'd be easy to shovel that up, but he, he must have forgot or whatever, young kid, you know, so. I'll check into it. Let, let's Excuse me. Okay. I can ask you a question. The 10 foot easement, who was it granted? Was it granted to the borough of Army or was it granted to each individual homeowner? Of the no, it was granted to the borough. If the easement is granted to the borough of Army, why would Toyota be responsible for maintaining it? Is that part of the 
the uh, site plan approval. And until such time that the barrel decides to do something, to do, it's still there. It's, it's, it's basically, you know, the easement is there for us to utilize if we decide to use it, but until we actually um, have some plans for it, it stays there. So the resolution says that the easement is, is our 10 foot easement for the borough of Harvey. And Toyota will maintain, because that was one of your questions, maintain it. So Toyota would be maintaining on the other side of that fence until the barrel at such time does anything. So they would cut the grass, plant bushes, things like that. So it would be a code enforcement issue at that point to, to maintain that. Okay. Was it on the site plan to show bushes? And no, it's just grass. That? It's just grass. It's grass. Which they already planned. They had plan it and put a tarp over. They put that blue stuff down. That all washed away after the first rain we had back in December. That's when all the mud came down and everything, you know. So we haven't had a good rain since they put all the stones in now, so I'm curious what's going to happen next, you know. You never know. We'll keep an eye on it. Okay, and great. And we got to give a chance for early spring to get yeah. some grass. Oh, yeah, I understand that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, I understand. I just wanted to make sure if they can maybe change it to shrubbery or something like that. I know they try to cut back on costs, but hey, you know, if the grass is going to wash away, it's going to be an ongoing thing, you know. And like I said, with getting back to the bike path, I really don't see how a bike path is going to go in there. Not when you're standing here and there's a straight wall up of mud, of hill, and then the fence is at the top, so. You know, they put a white fence on So I really don't know how that's going to work if it's, a, if, you know, if that's the plan. Okay. Well, thank you for listening to me and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mark Martino. I live at 578 Sherrington Lane. Um, just trying to figure out if anything's happening with the grounds and not my house. Yeah. Uh, I met the, I tried to catch up with you yesterday, earlier today, I really live, so you're from there. But then, at this time, we're going to hold on to the property. Okay. Um, you know, we're using the building, we're using the, the grounds dedicated for recreation. All right, that's fine. Now, who, that up. are you guys going to take uh, proper, you know, terms to take out the utilities that are connected to my house? Well, which, you know, that, I have nothing, you bought the house. Under the terms, I bought the house as is under the terms that that building was not linked to my property. Yeah, it's not linked to your property. So we'll, we'll, we'll terminate the property from our property to your property. We're not going to go onto your property. Just, uh, Why not? There's no need. Yes, there is, and there's a lot of electric wires still under my ground. Are they hooked up to your panel? Yes, they are. Well, then I advise you to get electricity out of this and that before. Well, we'll just have to see. You know, that's not, by any means, that's not the right way. Well, yeah. I mean, when you bought it, it was connected. So. When I bought it, it was connected. Well, I mean, whatever. That to my building, through, from that building to my house, with gas lines and all. So I mean, should have it disconnected. No, you are, are, you, are you doing work on the main property now? Am I doing work? Yeah. On the exterior? No, that's what I'm doing. doing is important for the property. So. Yeah, but it, it's our property. We're going to make Yeah, that's fine. You have to take your utilities out of the land. Well, it, it wasn't our utilities that went into your house. It's your building. It is your building, you're saying. So your building has, yeah, your building has utilities. It's our, it's our, it's our building. We'll make sure that the, the utilities are not connected to your property. And that's going to require us to remove the lines all the way up to your box, but we make sure that there's, it's terminated so there's no um, live wires. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's still connected in my panel. There's a pretty large sum of power going to as well as gas. It's a large gas line going to the All right, perfect, thank you. My question is, is can the parents or can not the parents park on the yellow and down? We were told before that they were allowed to park there to drop off and pick up for at least 15 minutes. 
I do, however, feel they should get 25 feet from the crosswalk because on the crosswalk right there, and people park there, face the wrong direction, back up, there's children going in and out. Something has to be done about it. I know the chief of police spoke with the superintendent and was, they were given the window to park there. People are scrambling, no offense to you, but for a gentleman coming and writing down tag numbers for three days in a row, there definitely is a safety issue, but it got worse when he was present because all the cameras were coming to the corner to me crazy over this person who isn't even from here writing around tag numbers to address it. I have people, parents coming up to me asking me, can I, can I not park here? What answer do you give them? If the council and the school board is not on the same page, how can you fix a problem when there clearly is a problem? Chief, Chief come on up. <laughs> I spoke to Nancy Ward about the problems at all the schools. Uh, we recently made West 3rd Avenue one way, and I've received nothing but good, good remarks about it. The parking problem, it's always been a problem. The schools have actually outgrown the area that they're built on. This town has grown substantially. I went to Downing School when I was a kid, and I've seen the difference. But I really don't have a problem, and this is something we have to work out. I don't have a problem. I've asked the school in the past to put signs up, that maybe we can just put a sign up, let's just stop and drop. I don't have a problem when I have a parent that has a five-year-old that doesn't want to let this kid walk out of their sight and walk into the school. It goes on with Bingham School, it goes on with Downing. I don't have a problem if the parent sits there and watches the child walk into the school. If this is creating a problem, then we'll address it. But we're going to have to do something with the parking. Down Bolt School, we're looking into changing the yellow curb to allow people to park on one side of the street. Can that be done with Downing, though, too, maybe? Just we're going to have to look spot. into it and consider it. Okay. I mean, Rome wasn't built in the day. So no, we have no. to, if this is things that, you know, that we have to consider. Okay. And what it is, too, is there's no more buses. So every parent, that all there's a lot more parents dropping off. You go by Volk School, it's it's crazy. Well, I, I don't want to speak for Volk because I. But I'm just saying, I live that way. You go by there, it's you know in the morning. I, yeah. I'd rather go up Connors Bridge and wait. Well, I'm, I'm, I think it, I think they should be able to pull up and drop their kids off. Absolutely. Should they pull so close close to the crosswalk? No. But I mean, parents were frantic, not knowing where to go, and then they come to me, and I just said, I directed them to my boss, and I know that. You know, the chief of police and everybody has been working on it, but it seems like nothing is changing on that. We're, so, we're going to address it. Right. Thank you for bringing it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> John Schmidt, from West Thompson Avenue, Gloucester City. Um, Mayor, do you think you made the right hire? with your the position of uh, municipal prosecutor for the year 2012. I'm not answering the question. Thank you. What? Don't be replaced with an invitation. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand out. Quick one. <laughs> oh, okay. Down Palisano, 831 North Oakland Avenue. <coughs> Are there any plans to fix the potholes on Orchard by St. Maria's Church? They're really getting bad. And when you cross at night, like with, after the bingo games, I'm just afraid somebody's going to get hurt. What's the address? Ben? I've been on more by the. No, no. She told me about St. Marie's already. I can vouch for that. Yeah, but you come down the hill? Yes. Or you're there? Yes. Or before you come coming over? As you're coming down the hill, okay, that's that whole on the street. Hall. The whole street. Uh, there's potholes? Oh, yes. Yeah. Down Warren. by the parking lot? The parking yes. Oh, the you wear a pair of heels. Forget it. It'll be noted from Mr. Williams to get the crew out there. If they, I don't know if they have a coal patch in now or they don't know if they have a hot patch. 
I'm sorry. They were in other parts of the family. Yeah, they did do some home patch, but that's not permanent. Thank you. Eleanor Kelly, 161 Forest Avenue. Earlier in the meeting, Mr. Bayshore spoke about a remediation that's being done in town and that now we have to hire someone to oversee the work that we're doing. What kind of remediation are you talking about? We, we haven't started the actual remediation, but there was an underground storage tank that was leaking. And right now, the DEP has us doing some testing just to make sure to make sure the levels aren't going any higher. The tank was removed probably six years ago, but there's still okay. some uh, contaminants in the ground. This is Barrow property? Yes, it is. This is Kelly. This is the old gas pump up at the old Barrow Hall. Oh. That the old Barrow garage when we used to pump our right, gas. That right. was the tank. Years ago, they were supposed to come out, but it cost too much money. They didn't take it out. Now, we took it out, and it's costing us a real lot of money. So basically, in a nutshell, that's what that is. That's Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. Jim Baird, uh, 11 East 10th Avenue. Um, I just wanted to correct one thing. Uh, my son does get lost to uh, down, um, and it is an excuse that I have to walk a uh, half block away to pick my son up because you won't, they, the bus driver won't cross Central Avenue because of the parking on 3rd. So I have to go and pick up my son across Central and then go back to the school and pick my other three kids up because the bus can't make it down 3rd Avenue. Now, you know, the chief of police and, and the police officers, you know, they do an outstanding job and I'm sure the last thing they want to do is issue residence tickets. You know, but some of these parents are actually trying to force the police hand because they're going to actually have to issue tickets because of the way that some people are taking advantage of the situation. It's not a drop off. Some people are double parking. And like I said, my, the bus for my son can't make it down 3rd Avenue across Central because of the way that people are parking. So they're, they're doing, they're, there doesn't need to be some changes, possibly make it just Central where they can park and not 3rd because there's actually two buses that make it to uh, the school. The one from uh, Bingham, I think, and, and another one that comes at 3.30 and drops more kids off. So there are buses that make it to the school. You know, and me personally, I don't park in the yellow. I park half block away to pick up my four kids. So, thank you. All right. Maria Panzarella, 12 South Oakland Avenue, Runnymede, New Jersey. Um, I am here not as a resident of the borough this evening, but as a representative from the Runnymede Youth Athletic Association. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Nick for uh, opening up to meeting with us regarding certain issues that we have been presented with or have going on right now. Um, the first thing I want to bring to everyone's attention is the building that sits across from the Harry Williams building that is borough property. It is a disgrace and it is what everyone that is a member of the RY and comes and anyone who comes from another town sees. Um, we need that building but we don't need it to look like that. I mean the top floor of it is completely infested with squirrels. Um, the bottom half of it proved it proved to be a necessity to our organization this fall. Um, parents, unfortunately, were lazy, too lazy to utilize the stands that are the newer version of the stands. So that being said, um, you know, again, for us it was huge, but it's in the capacity that it, it is, it's not serving. It's, it's We are actually asking someone to meet with us regarding whatever construction, zoning, whoever. We'll have parents do it. But we need the top half, the top half of the building gone. We need a new roof on the building, and then we need the lower half all fixed so that we can actually use it, store our equipment that we're spending. You know, we're actually raising money to purchase new equipment that's getting destroyed because of where we have to store it, basically. So 
if that can be looked into. Okay. Yeah. Myself and Councilman White did, did look at the property a little bit. Okay. We asked uh, our construction official, uh, Mr. Mecca, to go take a look at the building. Okay. It's a safety hazard. We'll location should notice that as well. As well. See Any of the report back to Council. Great. I thank you very much. The second issue I have is, um, and I speak not only on behalf of the Running Youth Athletic Association, but all of the parents who have children playing. Um, I've presented this same issue to the school board and I'm presenting it to you as well. Um, we completely appreciate use of the Harry Williams Building for our basketball program. Um, in the last three years, and I did just give these numbers to the school board yesterday as well, our numbers for basketball have increased. Um, 2010, we had 162 players. 2011, we had 175 players. And for 2012, we have 235 players. Um, and that does not include uh, the children that are playing travel basketball for us this year. And this year, Runnymede has five travel teams, in addition to the 22 in-house teams. Um, between Bolts and the Harry Williams building, we're paying in excess of $2,000 just for gym use. So that going into the budget, which already, in case anyone hasn't uh, shopped lately, uh, as our equipment, insurance, and everything else climbs in price, we then have to pass that along to our borough residents who opt to have their children participate in this. Um, I've asked the school board, as I said, the same thing. Our numbers to continue to grow in each sport each year. In the economic times we're presently in, so due to, so due to the number of families who find difficulty in affording to register their children to participate in these activities. The RYAA continues to do all we can to make it affordable for any and all families wishing to participate in our programs, including but not limited to extra fundraising. We've actually formed a fundraising committee uh, to help with this. We have a sponsorship program where willing and able families can actually pay for children who cannot afford to play um, to cover their registration costs. We are also, uh, have, we also just recently started raffles for free pass registrations. We have recently done away with participation awards, trophy and medals given to each player. We now only award first and second place in all competitive age groups. This also to offset the cost that we would need to pass on each registered player. We also just voted and passed a new policy that will take away our end of season parties for each sport. Which, if you've ever had a child that plays with the RY, they live for that. I mean, at the end of basketball, we did a fun flex party. And, you know, all the parties that we did, obviously, we look for the cheapest price and look for discounted, you know, venues that would, you know, be an affordable solution to a party. Um, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to do one party per year, and we're either going to do it at Green Acres or on the RY fields just to, you know, again, in our overall budget, cut down the cost that we have to pass on to the parents because they can't afford it right now. Um, as you can see, we're trying to do everything on our end that we can to cut costs. We're, act we're actually, I'm actually asking to become exempt from being charged for that gym. As taxpayers, so many parents have come to me this year and said, we're actually being triple dipped. We're paying taxes. As taxpayers, they're already being charged for the building that, you know, their kids play in. Then the ROI is being charged, so we have to charge them. The school board's doing the same thing. The school board policy committee is in a meeting as I stand here right now reviewing this same request. I'll, all I'm asking is, let's, let's be realistic. In a budget your size, please tell me what $600 a year is doing for you guys. You know, I've already offered, I, I mean, I understand that there's a policeman opening the gym up. Give me the key, I'll open it up. I'll lock the door. And you know what, when I lock the door at nine o'clock, I can then walk away knowing that nothing was damaged. Right now, when I walk out the door there every night at 9 o'clock, I'm sorry, excluding Monday and Wednesdays, when I walk out the door, I don't know what time someone's getting there to lock it up. I don't know what damage is being done once I'm gone in between that period of time. And, and I know I've addressed this with you before. But what I'm, asking, what I'm asking is that you please look to just make us exempt from being charged you know, for that gym. Or explain to the residents why they're being charged after the taxpayers' bill. It's, it's the taxpayers' building is what I'm trying to say. I have spoken to Ray about this, and I will bring it up in our budget um, committee to see if it is something we can accept. I, I happen to uh, agree a lot with, with, the, with your argument. Um, it's something that we started when I first got on council. That's when we started to impose a higher fee because we were spending a lot of money on electricity and things like this. The idea was to offset it. I don't disagree that $600 on a $7 million budget is, is inconsequential, but everyone knows every dollar makes a difference. Uh, we'll definitely, I'll definitely bring it to the Finance Committee and, and see if they would be interested. 
Um, obviously, there are costs to run that building. Absolutely. So we have to figure out how we can offset those costs. But, uh, well, on that note, when I leave at 9 o'clock, I don't have access to the lights to turn them off. So if I leave at 9 and an officer doesn't make it into that building until 11 p.m., 1 a.m., that's wasted electric. That when you do your cost analysis, can never actually be determined what it's costing to run for the ROI to utilize the building is another, you know, issue. So I'd appreciate your consideration, though, because like I said, we as a group are doing everything we can, you know, to cut costs to the parents. And you see our numbers are growing. You know, just give us a hand in any way that you can. Please. Thank you. Thank you.